In this video, we'll be discussing all the phases of the menstrual cycle in detail. But for a brief introduction, let's take a look at what the menstrual cycle really is. The menstrual cycle is a series of natural changes in hormone production and the structures of the uterus and ovaries that make conception possible. It comprises of the ovarian cycle, which controls the production and release of eggs, as well as the cyclic release of estrogen and progesterone, and the uterine cycle, which governs the preparation and maintenance of the lining of the uterus to receive an embryo. The ovarian and uterine cycles are concurrent and coordinated, and normally last between 20 to 35 days with a median length of 28 days, and continues till late 40s or early 50s. Menarche refers to the onset of the first menstrual period, which occurs at early adolescence and stops at menopause. The first day of menstrual bleeding is considered the first day of the cycle, and menstruation lasts for about 5 to 7 days. Ovulation occurs around the 14th day of a 28-day cycle. This means that there are usually 14 days leading up to ovulation, known as the pre-ovulatory period or follicular phase, which corresponds to the menstrual and proliferative phases of the uterine cycle. The 14 days following ovulation comprise the post-ovulatory period or luteal phase, which corresponds to the secretory phase of the uterine cycle. Let's take a look at the pre-ovulatory period or follicular phase of the cycle. It starts at the first day of menstruation and represents weeks 1 and 2 of the 4-week cycle. The hypothalamus secretes GnRH, which causes the anterior pituitary to release FSH and LH. These pituitary hormones control the maturation of the ovarian follicles, each of which is made up of a primary oocyte surrounded by layers of theca and granulosa cells, which are hormone-secreting cells of the ovary. FSH stimulates 15 or 20 ovarian follicles, which compete and only one emerges as the mature or graphene follicle. As the follicles develop, granulosa cells secrete increasing amounts of estrogen, which is a steroid hormone that stimulates the development of the endometrium and causes the mucus in the cervix to become thinner, so that the sperm can penetrate it around the time of ovulation. Estrogen has a negative feedback on the anterior pituitary and hypothalamus, and it suppresses the release of LH and FSH. While the ovary prepares an egg for ovulation in the follicular phase, the uterus prepares the endometrium for implantation in the proliferative phase. During the proliferative phase, high estrogen levels stimulate the thickening of the endometrium, the growth of the endometrial glands, and the emergence of spiral arteries which grow under the influence of estrogen. The endometrial thickness increases rapidly from 0.5 mm to 3.5 to 5 mm by the end of the proliferative phase. Ovulation occurs on the 14th day of a 28-day cycle, and just before ovulation, there is a spike in LH that causes one of the follicles to release the ovum. Let's have a quick glance at the hormonal changes occurring throughout the cycle. FSH is released at the start of the menstrual cycle, and this promotes follicular development. FSH spikes slightly prior to ovulation. Estrogen is released by the developing follicles and it gradually rises and then falls just before ovulation as the follicle prepares to release the egg. LH spikes just before ovulation. Progesterone, however, doesn't really have a role during the follicular phase, but during the luteal phase, both progesterone and estrogen rise to help thicken and maintain the endometrium for implantation. If fertilization does not occur, the levels of progesterone and estrogen drop because the corpus luteum has degenerated. This results in the breakdown of the endometrial lining and menstruation occurs. Following ovulation, the remnant of the ovarian follicle becomes the corpus luteum. The corpus luteum secretes progesterone and small amounts of estrogen and it continues to secrete progesterone if pregnancy is established. This function of secreting progesterone is later on taken over by the placenta. If pregnancy does not occur, the corpus luteum degenerates and progesterone levels fall. Meanwhile, under the influence of progesterone, the uterus enters into the secretory phase, during which the spiral arteries grow the most and become coiled. The uterine glands begin to secrete more mucus. After day 15, the fertile window begins to close. If pregnancy does not occur, the corpus luteum degenerates to corpus albicans and stops secreting progesterone. The drop in progesterone and estrogen removes the negative feedback from the hypothalamus and pituitary and the levels of FSH begin to rise again. The drop in progesterone and estrogen after the corpus luteum degenerates causes the endometrium to break down and menstruation occurs. 
The functional layer of the endometrium is shed and eliminated via the vagina, a process known as the menstrual period. This phase lasts for about five to seven days.